this week on Choice Hacking. Scotch brand Chivas Regal was in big financial trouble. They had gone from being a successful global spirits brand to almost losing it all. But some savvy and unexpected psychological marketing moves not only saved the company, but made Chivas Regal one of the most popular brands of scotch on earth. I'm Jennifer Kleinhens, and you're listening to Choice Hacking, a podcast about applying behavioral science and psychology to business, marketing, experience, design, and more. Join me today as we unpack the psychology behind the rise and fall and rise again of Chivas Regal Scotch and how we can use the lessons of its failure and success to grow our own brands and businesses. But before we get started, I want to take a few seconds to tell you more about me and Choice Hacking. Choice Hacking isn't just a podcast. We also offer online courses, team training, coaching, and consulting to brands of all sizes, including startups, scale-ups, and Fortune 500 brands. We're based out of London and New York City and have clients across the U.S., Canada, Europe, Australia, and more. Some of the amazing clients our team have worked with include brands like Starbucks, McDonald's, T-Mobile, AT&T, O2, Lloyds Bank, and big ad agencies like Havas and DDB. If you're interested in learning more about how we can help you grow your business with behavioral science, AI, and marketing psychology, visit choicehacking.com to learn more. That's choicehacking.com. Now on to the show. Chivas Regal was created by two brothers, James and John Chivas, who started out as owners of a small grocery store in Scotland. They were actually two of the 11 Chivas siblings. It was the early 1800s, and like many families, the Chivases expected the brothers to go into the family business, farming. But James and John had bigger ambitions than tending a farm in the Scottish Highlands, so they headed out on foot to the city of Aberdeen, today known for its large amount of whiskey distilleries. It took them three days of walking to make it to the city, and once there, James found work in a small grocery store. Eventually, his brother John joined him, and together they ran a grocery store called The Emporium. Always looking to better serve their customers, they noticed that people were asking for a smoother tasting whiskey. So the Chivas brothers set to work in the cellar of the Emporium and they created their masterpiece, Chivas Blended Scotch Whiskey. And in 1843, Queen Victoria sent a royal warrant to the brothers, which made their whiskey not just Chivas, but Chivas Regal. For those who aren't familiar, a royal warrant is an official recognition granted by a member of the British royal family to a company that supplies goods or services to them. In the context of whiskey, it means that a specific distillery, in this case Chivas, has provided alcoholic beverages to the royal household for at least five years, demonstrating consistent quality and service. Chivas Regal eventually grew to be the fourth biggest brand of blended scotch whiskey in the world, but World War II would change the company's destiny and its marketing strategy. After the war, Chivas was struggling for sales. While in some countries, like the United States, the war brought a time of rapid economic expansion, in other countries, like England, for example, it brought more of the same economic restrictions, like food rationing. Europe was rebuilding, and while they were in recovery, they were cutting out luxury purchases, like scotch. Chivas, to put it bluntly, was in trouble. But instead of cutting their prices, they doubled them. Now, you might think that would kill the company, but actually, it saved them. Why did higher prices grow Chivas Regal's sales instead of killing the brand? Well, contrary to popular belief, pricing is about 90% psychology and 10% math. We don't really know what something is supposed to cost. Instead, we pick up psychological clues from the product and its context. And when something's expensive, we think it must be high quality because it costs so much. So when Chivas Regal doubled its prices, people started seeing it as higher quality, and sales exploded. 
It was so successful that people started calling the strategy the Chivas Regal effect. But in the behavioral science world, we call it the price quality effect. There's a psychological reason why this price increase saved Chivas, while it would have very likely killed another brand. It's because Chivas Regal is what's called a Veblen good. American economist Thorsten Veblen discovered that for certain types of products, luxury items like Birkin bags, Philippe Patek watches, or hypercars, the more expensive something is, the more we want it. It's because we have a mental shortcut, also called a heuristic, that says higher quality equals higher price, and therefore higher price equals higher quality. And most of the time, that mental shortcut is correct. When something costs more, it's made from better materials with better craftsmanship and care. Studies have found that this lust for expensive products can also be attributed to our desire to signal status to those around us. Brands like Apple, Equinox Gym, and Chanel are all status brands that carefully manage themselves and their brand to allow them to apply the Chivas Regal effect. Here's how. Apple is the quintessential example of the Chivas Regal effect in technology. The brand consistently prices its products higher than its competitors, even when the functionality of the product is nearly identical. This pricing strategy helps Apple maintain its status brand image and reputation for quality and innovation in the minds of customers. Equinox is a high-end gym that looks more like a first-class airline lounge than a place to sweat on the treadmill while you watch Love Island. Its high price gives it an air of quality and exclusivity. Even Equinox's ads look more like a high fashion photo shoot and a place to pump iron. Products that can apply the Chivas Regal effect aren't just high priced, they're also exclusive, since exclusivity is a natural extension of quality. You can't really manufacture a million of something if it's made by one master craftsperson from rare, hard to find materials. Equinox's famous We Don't Speak January ad campaign actually banned new members from joining during the first month of the year, the most popular month for new gym memberships. By making it impossible to join Equinox during the time when everyone is looking to join a new gym, its exclusivity drove its reputation as a status brand. Chanel, the luxury fashion house best known for its suits, perfumes, and bags, is no stranger to high prices. But in 2023, it shocked customers when it raised the price of their classic flap bag to $10,000, a 200% increase in less than 10 years. But why did they raise the price so much so fast? Because Chanel's Veblen good status was under threat. Driven by social media, namely TikTok, the Chanel classic flap had become a wildly popular starter bag for luxury collectors and handbag investors, a stepping stone to a quote-unquote real luxury bag like an Hermes Birkin. This online reputation as attainable luxury started to erode Chanel's position as a status brand. Too many people were able to buy it, so it started to become too common, as collectors would say. In order to slow down how many people got their hands on a new Chanel Classic flap bag, the brand raised the price of its bags to compete with the uber-desirable Hermes Birkin and Kelly bags, which also start at around 10,000 new. I talked a lot more about this in Season 5, Episode 14, all about the psychology of luxury brands like Hermes. Making a Chanel classic flap more expensive also made it more rare, and rareness drives the exclusivity and status perceptions that Chanel wants its brand to stand for. The billion dollar question is, can the Chivas Regal effect grow your brand, or is it a really bad idea? If you think raising your prices could be a good move, start by asking yourself a few questions. First, does our customer buy our products to signal status? If the answer is yes, raising your prices could help drive demand. If you think that customers mainly buy your product for its utility and not its prestige, then raising your prices probably will not increase demand. Next, is your brand viewed as exclusive or aspirational? Raising prices alone won't drive demand if your brand doesn't have the other markers of a luxury product, exclusivity or scarcity, a rich history, and a reputation for craftsmanship. And last, have you tested price elasticity in the past? 
Price elasticity is a way of measuring how much demand for your product changes when the price changes. If you've raised prices in the past and demand went up, not down, well, that's an indicator that your product is a good fit for the Chivas Regal effect. Thank you for listening to the Choice Hacking Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review it. It takes me 20 plus hours to create every episode, and it helps the podcast find new listeners when it has more ratings and reviews. And don't forget, you can learn more about behavioral science and psychology applied to business when you subscribe to the free Choice Hacking Ideas newsletter. You'll join more than 8,000 brilliant entrepreneurs and marketing folks from companies like Google, Coke, Disney, McDonald's, and Starbucks who get my newsletter. To sign up, just visit choicehackingideas.com. That's choicehackingideas.com. Until next time. I hit record it, Jap, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming now, these cars and planes, I'm always boarding. Just out touring down in Charlotte like I play for Hornets.